Scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, throw that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Welcome, beauties and bows, to the chalet located in Champagne City, baby. <laughs> you see it. Come meet me, the Empress, for a little grown discussion and bubbly banter. Over here, we get classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then come on in. Tell your friends about us. And on your way in, hit that like and subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the chalet for a new show. And if you're a non-alcoholic kind of confidant, then grab you a non-alcoholic bubbly and get in here. It's all good. <laughs> and if you're listening in the morning, go ahead and throw some juice in and make it a mimosa. Do y'all have those glasses filled to the rim? Then raise them high. And let's get ready for our affirmations and encouragement. Confidants, gather around. And listen to the story of strength that resides within each of us. We are more than mere mortals. We are warriors of the soul, forged in the fires of adversity and tempered by the winds of change. Look deep into your hearts and see the resilience that beats within, a beacon of hope in the darkest of nights. We have faced trials meant to break us, yet here we stand, unbowed and unbroken. Our scars are not marks of weakness, but badges of courage, reminders of the battles we have fought and the victories we have won. So let us embrace our strength, our resilience, our unwavering spirit. Let us stand together, united in our power, shining our ethereal glow in a world that sometimes feels consumed by darkness. Together, there is nothing we can't overcome. Now repeat after me. I am me, unapologetically authentic, a beacon of inspiration, a living testament to resilience and strength. I stand tall, unwavering in the face of adversity, for I have weathered storms and emerged stronger. My authenticity is a force to be reckoned with, a reminder that true strength comes from within. Today and every day, I choose to be the best version of myself, inspiring others to do the same. Now here's to you, confidant, because you are worth it. And if you want more of that, make sure you tune in on tomorrow for Wellness Waves Wednesdays. We will be continuing going through the Heartbreak Hotel 
And on tomorrow, we will be discussing overcoming insecurity and self-loathing. So make sure you tune in on tomorrow. So I was on Instagram Boulevard again, right? And I came across this video of Roly. Or should we call her now Roles? Because <laughs> baby, them roles are all gone. And I looked at comment after comment after comment that said, oh, she snatched and oh, she looks good. And yes, Roly and way to go, Roly. And I have to admit, she looks good. But my question is, at what cost? See, these are the questions no one wants to answer and no one wants to talk about because we want to just celebrate everything without counting up the cost. We don't care. This is this is the season and generation of I don't care as long as it looks good. And if you don't know who she is, Roly was first introduced to us on a show called One More Chance on Zeus, which was a dating show um, where Chance... Um, who used to be on the I Love New York show, but ended up getting his own spinoff with his brother, uh, Real Chance at Love. Yeah, that chance. He ends up getting a dating show on um, Zeus where he has the opportunity to find quote unquote love, but he never really chooses anyone. So I think the show is just for show. <laughs> and the world fell in love with this big girl on the show, right? This big girl who was absolutely with the it's, you know what I mean? Super confident and standing right in the midst of all these smaller girls and giving them the business. You hear me? I mean, a run for their money. She did two seasons and then we saw her again on Baddies. And we were still crazy about her because she didn't have a problem standing up to Natalie the Nun and really owning her space. She didn't take nothing off no one. But then something changed. Yeah, something changed. She had the opportunity to get surgery from goals. And from what I hear, she got it absolutely free. And I won't say that she changed. I will say the surgery just revealed to the world who she really was. You see, before the surgery, we would see her in food stamp lines and just saying that she had to do what she had to do. But then all of a sudden, after the surgery, it was no no, no longer that tone. It was, you hoes just broke and you hoes just jealous. Then the confidence turned into arrogance and our big girl became a bully and a villain. She got a BBL prior to this latest season of Baddies, which was Baddies East, uh, that just aired, and I mean ass cheeks everywhere. And the world became concerned because we all said it can't be healthy for someone of her size to just go under the knife and get liposuction and a BBL without significant weight loss. But again, this is the generation of instant everything. No one wants to work for anything. They just want everything quick and fast. And she didn't care if it was good as long as she looked good. Then the season was over, right? Just recently ended. And we see Roly getting another surgery in less than a year. Because, of course, with her size, one surgery wasn't going to be enough for her to obtain the shape that she wanted or the shape that she thought we wanted. Because that's the one thing that we got to pay attention to. A lot of these girls aren't doing this for themselves. They're doing it to please the crowd. So one surgery wasn't going to be enough to give her the look that she felt was going to please the crowd. So she went back under the knife to obtain what you now see on this screen. And my question is why? The truest insecurities will always be revealed when you have money to fix it. And not only that, but she said she's going under the knife again in about three months in order to have her back fat removed and to get another BBL. And my question again is why? And I hear the people in the back saying, oh, y'all just hating, y'all just jealous. How about we're just concerned? Did you ever think about that, huh? 
It behooves me that we can automatically play the hate card because we see something that causes concern. Do you know why it causes concern? Because when did we stop choosing to work for what we wanted? When? What happened to going to the gym and sweating and getting our heart rate up and building up cardio and stretching and concentrating on your breathing and building stamina? What happened to doing things the regular way? What happened to it? If all of the big girls are running to get surgery to become small the minute they get money, who's going to encourage the little 12-year-olds and 15-year-olds who are overweight to think that she has value and love herself and hold her head high and stretch your stuff just the way you are? I mean, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk. Scoot up. Because what are we telling her? What we're telling her is you don't have value unless you are smaller. Come on, let's talk about it. You are teaching them that you don't have to work for anything anymore. You can just go get sucked and tucked and bladed and filleted on the table and you'll be just fine. Don't worry about whether or not it's healthy, whether or not it's good for you. Because we live in a day and age where it's about the looks, the aesthetics, Why? Because mass media has told us for so long that we don't look good unless we look a certain way. At one point, it was big breast and a tiny physique. And that's how we got Dolly Parton and Pamela Anderson. But then Buffy the Body came along and here came the video vixens and they popped out and everybody wanted a big butt because that's what attracted the rappers and as if somehow... A big, a big ass is what made you more high value. Then with Buffy the body, here comes the fix of flat injections and concrete asses and everyone taking trips to the Silicon Valley. And it would be one thing if people were just getting a little done to enhance, but no, no. We had to go above and beyond and asses got bigger and bigger and bigger. And no one was worrying about proportions. Just, I'll take five gallons on pump three. And you had everybody trying to get a bigger butt. And you would have thought when girls saw butts start to burst open and tissue start to die and girls start to be unalived, that people would say, nah, the benefit isn't worth the risk. But no, no. Now here we have Roly challenging the status quo and saying that big girls can get it too. And here she goes on the table getting filleted like a fish over and over again to attain this perfect body, to feel her insecurity. Nothing you do outside will fix inner turmoil. I'm sorry, it won't. The turmoil of feeling you're not good enough. I'm not a healthcare professional, but you can't tell me that getting three people removed from your body at one time is healthy or okay. You can't tell me that. She already said she lost the feeling in her stomach when she had lipo done and got the BBL the first time and had to get it repaired this time in order to regain some feeling and you continue to get more surgery? You continue to get a tummy tuck? and a BBL, and your breast done. You're not even giving your body a chance to fully heal, and you're getting cut again, and again, and again. Look, I looked up the risk of getting a tummy tuck, right? Because we've all thought about it. Well, majority of us have thought about it at one point in time or another, right? So the risks are fluid accumulation beneath the skin, which is seroma, Drainage tubes left in place after surgery can help reduce the risk of excess fluid. Your doctor might also remove fluid after surgery using a needle or syringe. So there's a problem of excess fluid accumulating underneath underneath your skin. And it's increased when you're bigger, right? According to what I looked at. There's also poor wound healing. Sometimes the area along the incision line heals poorly or begins to separate. You might be given antibiotics during and after surgery to prevent an infection. And it can be increased if you are overweight. 
unexpected scarring. The incision scar from the tummy tuck is permanent, but it's typically placed along uh, the easily hidden bikini line. The length and visibility of the scar varies from person to person, and it's increased when you're bigger. Tissue damage. Tissue damage. During a tummy tuck, fatty tissue deep within your skin in the abdominal area might get damaged or die. Smoking can increase the risk of tissue damage. Depending on the size of the area, tissue might heal on its own or require a surgical touch-up procedure. So that means, depending on the area, if your stomach is bigger, you might need a touch-up surgery in order to obtain the size that you feel like you want. Changes in skin sensation. During a tummy tuck, the repositioning of your abdominal tissue can affect the nerves in the abdominal area and infrequently in the upper thighs. You'll also, I'm sorry, you'll likely feel some reduced sensation or numbness. This usually dis diminishes in the months after the procedure. And we're all so desperate to fit a modus operandi that we say, I don't care. I just want body, child, if I only had a brain. And that was just with a tummy tuck. With a liposuction, you can have contour irregularities. Your skin may appear bumpy or wavy or withered due to uneven fat removal, poor skin elasticity, and scarring. These changes may even be permanent. Fluid buildup, temporary pockets of fluid called seromas can form under the skin. We saw this one again with the tummy tuck. They may need to be drained using a needle. You can have numbness, saw this again. You may feel temporary or permanent numbness in the treated areas. Nerves in the areas may feel irritated. You can build infections. Skin infections are rare but possible. A severe skin infection may be life-threatening. Uh, internal puncture, rarely if the thin tube that's used for the surgery penetrates too deeply, it can puncture an internal organ. This may require emergency surgery to repair the organ. Fat embolism, where pieces of fat may break away and become trapped in a blood vessel. They can then gather in the lungs and travel to the brain. A fat embolism is a medical emergency. Kidney and heart problems can, can develop. When large volumes of liposuction are performed, fluids shift. This can cause possibly life-threatening kidney and heart lung problems. Lidocaine toxicity. Lidocaine is a medicine used to help manage pain. It's often given with fluids injected during the uh, liposuction. And although lid lidocaine is usually safe, lidocaine toxicity sometimes can occur. And this can cause serious heart and central nervous system problems. Again, I say, if I only had a brain. Now just think about the fact if you're doing both of these together and you're going to tell me that the benefits outweigh the risks and that's not including the BBL a surgery that's so dangerous to most plastic surgeons surgeons that they won't even perform it and again I say she had all of this done in less than a year with her size just to get down to a size that will please the crowd. And the risk of these complications rises if the surgeon has to work on larger body surfaces or does multiple procedures during the same operation. Dumb, dumb, diddy. I don't understand. Again, I say, if I only had a brain, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how we got to a point where our value is so low that we're willing to put ourselves in danger in order to be beautiful. And what makes it even sadder is you'll have more big girls running to get this surgery because they're looking at Roly and saying, well, it worked for her. We don't know if it worked for her. She just had the surgery. We don't know what the outlying effects are. It took her to just now to tell us that 
she had lost a feeling in her stomach from the liposuction she had back in, what was it, July, August? So we don't know. And you'll have so many big girls running to get this surgery in an effort to be small, putting their self at risk and putting themselves in danger instead of us big girls just coming together and saying, hey, let's just work out. Let's work out together. Let's all go on a 30-day plan together and lose weight together. Why don't we start that trend? Why don't we all start a 30-day trend? Now, listen, listen. I understand the desire to want to be a certain weight or a certain size. But if you're going to do it, do it for yourself and not because you're trying to please the crowd. Listen, when I had my baby boy, and my baby boy is 19 now, um, in my last trimester of my pregnancy, um, I ended up having Braxton Hicks contractions, and I was having them so bad. And I ended up going to the hospital. The hospital told me I had a bladder infection. So um, they gave me medication to take, went home. The medication wasn't working. Now, mind you, my son was due in about two weeks. So went back to the hospital probably like two more times. And the last time I went to the hospital, the nurse looked at me and she said, I think I know what the issue is. So she ran the test. She said, just like I thought, you don't have a bladder infection, you have a kidney infection. Well, they admitted me into the hospital and uh, pumped me through full of these fluids. Well, after I gave birth to my son and I ended up having to have a C-section because, um, with my kidney infection every time my temperature would go up his heart rate would increase and by the third day of doing this now mind you i told them in the hospital just deliver the baby i'm already considered full terms i'm 38 weeks and treat me separately they told me no it's normal it's normal so by the third day um instead of his heart rate increasing his heart rate dropped so they rushed me into um you know, emergency delivery, and they induce my labor. And by this time, his heart rate isn't isn't tolerating the labor. So I ended up having to have an emergency C-section. Well, when I was in recovery, when I got ready to, excuse me, when I got ready to take a shower the next day when I could stand up, I'm in the shower, and literally I saw my legs just start expanding in the shower. Did y'all see... Cause I love karate movies. Did anybody in here see Big Trouble in Little China? <laughs> you remember at the end when the man got angry and he started like tightening himself up and all of a sudden he began to expand and then blew up? Like that's what I saw going on with my legs. My legs literally expanded. And I called the nurses in there. I'm all in a panic. The nurse came in and she told me, oh, sweetie, it's normal. That's just the fluid that was in your body trying to find a way to release. So I was probably swollen about a week. I kid you not from my legs down to my feet. When um, it finally went down, I had cellulite and I hated it. I've never had cellulite before a day in my life. I absolutely hated it. I thought about going to get cellulase, but cellulase, they take this laser and they go in to the strings um, in between your fat or whatever, and they surgically um, sever them to remove. And I was like, eh. Because just what if you sever the wrong thing? See, I'm a Virgo. I, my mind be mining. You feel me? So to me, I'm always concerned about the risk over the benefit. One of the reasons why I didn't get the COVID vaccine, but that is a totally different subject. What I'm saying to you is, at what point do you stop and think about the risk to yourself? To you. I even thought about getting liposuction. My stomach isn't extremely big, but I remember when I used to have a small flat stomach and I wanted it back. So I thought about getting liposuction, but then I saw what happened to Kanye's mother and one was enough for me. It was enough for me to the point that I didn't want it. So I'm saying to you, if you, my sisters and my brothers 
want to obtain a body that you can be happy with, let's go, let's go on a 60 day trend. Let's, let's start a 60 day trend where we get up every day for 60 days and we're doing crunches. Do y'all remember them? At what point that was going viral where everybody was getting up and working out together and posting their results. Why don't we go back to starting that? It is a proven fact that you appreciate more what you work for. Because when you work out, guess what? You got to change your eating habits. You got to change what you put into your body. You got to change how you move around. Working out builds energy. It builds stamina. So why don't we do things that are going to make us better instead of doing things that are just going to make us look better? To be honest with you, I'm scared for rolling. I really am. Because even though we laugh and we key and tee over some of the things that these people do, um, at the end of the day, I have a heart. I have a heart. And I'm really concerned that one of these times, excuse me, she's going to lay on that table and she's not going to get back up. All in the name of looking good being snatched I'm shitting on you bitches all in the name of that you're gonna lose your life and I don't want that to be true for her I don't I don't want that to be true for you I don't want that to be true for anyone who is so quick to take the easy way out the easy way out instead of working for what you want so that you can appreciate what you obtain from it because you worked for it. I'm pretty for sure the individuals who went to Juilliard to learn how to act are appreciative of the roles that they got because they worked for it. They put in the effort and worked for it. I'm pretty for sure that the individuals who actually learned music and took the time to figure out what this note meant and that what that note meant and, and how to train their voices so that they can hit the notes that they wanted to want to hit. I'm pretty for sure that they appreciate the time and effort that they put in to get it. When are we going to put in the time and effort to get what we want instead of trying to get everything instantaneous again i'm not a medical professional i'm just a concerned citizen who wants to see my beauties and bows my kings and queens my confidants look and feel good on the inside and the out inside and out not just on the out so that you can portray an image to the crowd that's all i have for this one Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this crap. And not just about Roly, but just about this plastic surgery craze era that we happen to find ourselves in. And then tune in with me tomorrow for Wellness Waves Wednesdays as we continue to journey through the Heartbreak Hotel and find out what led us in there, how we got trapped, and most of all, how we escaped. Again, tomorrow we're dealing with insecurity and we're dealing with self-loathing so that we can learn a little bit of (laughs) self-love. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-ta.